Darn you clouds! Yeah, just uh, just as the eclipse was beginning here in Toronto, we had clouds move over. But again, coming up at 6:48, once the, the 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 partial eclipse begins in earnest here in Toronto, we're going to switch to an animation on our second screen and show you what it looks like beyond those clouds. But right now, here's a live image, uh, courtesy of NASA TV, through the Griffith Observatory in the hills outside of uh, Los Angeles. We're into what's called the penumbrial uh, eclipse right now. That is sort of the lighter shadow of the Earth that is just now casting across the moon. Uh, just at 648, we're going to see the tip of the Earth's shadow, uh, of the, the um, umbral, help me, help me, because I've, I've forgotten all of the term, terminology again there, Adam, the umbral e eclipse, yes. right? Umbral. The umbral eclipse, we'll start to see that at 648 here. Now, this is what we're dealing with, Adam, right now here in Toronto. So here is our camera, which is focused off into the western sky. There, there we go. It's all cloudy here right now, as you can see. Uh, that is approximately where the moon is right there, Adam. <laughs> oh, not great. <laughs> you know what? But here's the thing. It wasn't going to be that great of a show anyway here for us across uh, Toronto and across southern Ontario because the moon is setting once the really good stuff happens. It only would have been a partial lunar eclipse for us. Some good news, though, that that cloud cover is bringing warmer temperatures. Comes with a little bit of a catch, though. There's some snow on the way. Temperatures are up to minus 9 now in Toronto. It's minus 4 in Windsor. It's plus 1 in Chicago. You can see that warmer air, but back toward Winnipeg, that colder air does start to move through. So light snow starting later this morning. It's going to be about 2 to 3 centimeters most spots across the GTA. A few places could pick up as much as 5. Pretty minimal as far as impact is concerned. Timing is great because it comes in toward the tail end of that morning commute. And then we're going to see it wrapping up by the evening drive. So uh, as far as the potential for snow here over the next 48 hours, and that's what this really is, is a snapshot of the next 48 hours. Two to three coming our way as we head into the day today. And then another one to two along the cold front that arrives late Thursday. That one's going to be producing some wet flurries. Temperature should be mild, so we'll see a lot of that melting on contact. And we're going to set up some lake snow back in behind it, so the snow belt regions are going to get a little bit more there. Temperatures here over the next seven days. We're looking at one degree today for the daytime high. That'll happen as we get into the evening. Now cooling off a great deal overnight tonight, down to minus three, and then a high of three degrees in the forecast during the day tomorrow. And that cold front arrives. So we go from plus three down to minus 14 to start off Friday morning. We're looking at wind chill that'll be into the minus 20s. That Arctic air is back for Friday into Saturday, minus four in the forecast. Snow arriving into the evening, continuing as we get into the day on Sunday. Then we're gonna stay cool and below that seasonal mark as we get into Monday of next week. We'll warm things up a little bit, back to seasonal at least on Tuesday, and we'll have some cloud cover to contend with there for Tuesday. Let's check on the forecast, here's Carrie. All right, thanks a lot, Adam. Well, we are looking at a problem right now. Eastbound on the 401, it's a stalled vehicle uh, just before Leslie in the collectors, and it looks like the left lane is blocked off because of that. So it is starting to slow things down on the eastbound 401, but uh, it's not too bad right now. That's the camera at Bayview. If I go uh, just east of Bayview, you can see that backup just starting to build as you approach Leslie in the collector lanes. The express lanes doing just fine as you head through that stretch. The rest of the drive, really not all that bad. Uh, we are looking at uh, some delays building on the major routes, but not too bad. Southbound on the 410, there's a look at the westbound 401 as you head across Scarborough, and the eastbound QEW just gradually filling in as you head from Guelph Line over to about third line. And in town, TTC reporting a collision southbound on Bathurst at Fleet. So that is affecting service on the TTC routes in that area. That's a look at your drive. Back to you, Melanie. All right, thank you so much, Carrie. Uh, since you've been mentioning the TTC, I should mention this, that uh, they've just tweeted out on line one that customers may experience a 15-minute delay, normal, uh, more than their normal travel between Bloor and King, because they have some signal problems. Uh, this is northbound uh, at Bloor. So, again, between King and Bloor, it'll be slower for you. So just keep that in mind, and hopefully that improves. We'll watch that for you. Uh, to other news now, many questions have been raised by the community to stay. Okay, so we've been watching this all morning long, and if you are an avid sky gazer like our Kevin Frankish, you are in for a trifecta of lunar activity this morning. It is a total lunar eclipse. It's occurring during a blue moon as well as a super moon, and that's going to happen just before 7 a.m., so 6.48, I believe, is the exact time here. The total lunar eclipse will occur when the Earth moves between the sun and the moon, which also happens to be a blue moon, also the second full moon of the month. 
Uh, so it's going to be spectacular. Unfortunately, here at home, not great. But according to NASA, the lunar eclipse is going to last for about one hour and 16 minutes. And if you miss it, you have to wait to 2037 to see the next one. Uh, ooh, he looks like Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. What? <laughs> you should freeze that, right? Absolutely. Kev, are you excited? I think he's excited. I'm, I'm a sky geek. I, I, I love know. this stuff. This is great. <laughs> so how about this shot? Unfortunately, this is the one from Riverdale Park. You know, it, the moon's behind there somewhere. We can tell you that. A whole lot of cloud cover, unfortunately. But we have you covered. We have you covered, Kev. So on our second screen, we've got something that Brian Hoare, our graphics guy, has been working so hard on. Some really cool animation. So go to our second screen, bttoronto.ca, for that. And we'll also be watching uh, what's happening from the Griffith, Griffith Observatory, NASA's feed as well. They've got some cool shots. So stay tuned for that.